when Drop sent me this keyboard, I was like, wow, finally a keyboard that you guys can actually afford. When you look at Drop's other keyboards, such as the Drop Alt or the Drop Control, you'll see that this keyboard, the Drop Enter, costs less than half of those. But when you take a closer look, it really starts to make sense why this one is so much cheaper. This keyboard, the Drop Enter, is $90 on Drop. It's $100 on Amazon. And this is an ultra competitive price point. I've seen so many changes in this price category in the last year alone and new features from Bluetooth, hot swappability, different switch styles, keycaps, all those things are coming up in this $100 price point. Now Drop comes up with a keyboard to compete in this price point. Did Drop skimp on too many features? to make this board? Or is this just a perfect $90 keyboard? First things first, I like to say that the Drop Enter is not a hot swappable board. And that can be a make it or break it moment for when you're really deciding to buy this keyboard. The things that really stood out about the Drop Alt and the Drop Control were that they were hot swappable, QMK compatible, and they pretty much had an RGB everywhere kind of look. Now the Drop Enter has a completely different set of features. It's not hot swappable, it has white only backlight, and it's not QMK compatible either. But it does come with two switch types that are pretty recommended within the mechanical keyboard community. First switch type is Gateron Yellow, and you'll see Gateron Yellow posted everywhere, on Reddit, on YouTube, in the comments, reviews, everywhere. This switch is highly regarded as pretty much the go-to budget linear switch for anyone who wants to get into mechanical keyboards and wants a nice linear switch that's super smooth and feels really nice. Now the other switch you can get are Halo Trues, that's what I've got. And they're pretty heavy tactiles with a nice bump at the top. You'll find yourself pretty much never bottoming out because the spring force after that bump is really high. Trust me, like if you're typing on this a lot, you're building those finger muscles like no other. You have biceps on your fingers. Okay, that's really weird. It's pretty fatiguing typing on this keyboard if your main purpose is bottoming out every time. So you can't swap out the switches to whatever you want, but Drop did take into account what switches would be beneficial. You're not just picking out switches from the typical red, brown, and blue. You got something a little more than that. All right, so this keyboard is not QMK compatible. And for those of you who don't even know what QMK is, it's just an open source firmware that allows you to remap keys and do other cool things on your board, such as set macros, do lighting, all that good stuff. But this keyboard doesn't have that. But you do get secondary media functions and it's TKL. So you pretty much don't lose any function unless you're putting in a bunch of numbers every day, then you need a number pad. And if you do, you're not looking at this anyways. The Drop Enter has a full anodized aluminum case with a plastic shell. Now it may not look as good as a Drop Alt or the Drop Control, but man is it hefty. Right out of the box, this keyboard is absolutely solid. It's hefty, it looks really good. At the back, you'll see that there are four rubber feet, two at the very bottom, and two that are sort of built into the kickstands. So without the kickstands open, Keyboard's gonna slide just a little bit side to side. With the kickstands flipped out on your board, you got that nice angle, but you also have more rubber feet to prevent you from sliding. On the top left, you'll see that you have your USB-C port. And if you do wanna make this fancier, pair it with a budget coiled cable, you can check out right here. The bottom, you'll also see that the aluminum isn't a hard angle, but rather it curves with the case, making it a really sleek and clean look. Despite this being the gray version, the top plastic shell is more of an olive color. Speaking of options, you have black, gray, or white for the case colors. From the side, you can see that it's got a bezel design. No floating keycaps here. Looks nice. In the back, you do have some nice drop enter branding, and I just love that. That looks really good. Too bad we won't be looking at it from the bottom, so. That's weird. It's got very nice keycaps. In fact, the keycaps remind me a lot of the Drop Skylight series keycaps, which are about $45 per set. 
Now, considering that this keyboard is only $90, I would say these keycaps are very spectacular for the price. They are double shot PBT and they have pretty textured tops, but it's also pretty smooth too. The legends are super duper nice, no separations at all, none of this gamery font, but as you can see, it's almost impossible to see unless you have some backlight showing through. Speaking of backlight, they say it's white backlight, but it's actually more yellow. And at first I thought it was just me, but I asked other people and I would say it's definitely yellow. The brightness of the lights go really bright and you can dim it down if you want, depending on how much light's available in your room. Typing on this feels fantastic. There are just a few nitty gritty details that I have to pick on, such as the backspace. When I'm typing and I press backspace on the top half, it, the key tends to get really stuck. If you look at the stabilizers, they are plate mounted cherry style stabilizers. Nothing too special here, but combined with the Halo True switches with their heavy spring force and their high tactility, you're gonna get a stuck key. Out of all the stabilizers, the spacebar is probably the loudest. And this is a great time to jump into our sound test. So yeah, Drop did ditch a few of their features that really distinguish their boards from other companies, aka HotSwap, QMK, and RGB Everywhere. Sort of sucks that those are gone in this board, but if you're someone who's looking for that real simple, sleek look, and it's pretty minimal, this isn't a bad board to look at at all. It's got a high quality case design, it's hefty, really nice keycaps, it's got a limited number of switches, but it's still better than the usual red, blue, brown switch options. Sure, it's not a drop alt and it's not a drop control, but it's only $90 and you do get what you paid for. So if you were thinking of getting this as a budget version of a drop alt or a drop control, just stop. Save your money and buy the drop alt or the drop control because this ain't it. This ain't it. But for $90, this board probably will exceed your expectations in terms of build quality. Because other boards in this price range, they're not built like this. Check out the review on our website for an at a glance, easily digestible format. And if you enjoy what you're watching and want to support us here at Switch and Click, think about checking our Patreon page where you can get exclusive content such as behind the scenes unboxings, live streams, Q and A's, and more. Thank you to our patrons for letting us do this. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out other relevant content on our channel. And bye. If you want a drop keyboard, stop. No, no, that's not it. If you want to drop alt or control, if you're thinking you can get, if you're thinking you can drop, la 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 la. If you're thinking you can get the quality of a drop alt or control in the drop enter, don't even think about it. That's not happening. Instead, save your money. Get the drop alt or the drop control. Or better yet, just save your money. Don't buy anything. Don't buy anything. Put it in savings. Invest. Buy yourself lunch. Do good stuff. Okay. Don't get coffee though. Make it yourself.